What's up, peers, and welcome to join the Wasabikas. Now, finally, after a long time waiting in season 2.0, uh, we are releasing this podcast in tandem uh, with now our testing uh, review uh, process of the new Wasabi Wallet 2.0 software. Uh, and here is the place where you will find all the interesting new nuances and considerations uh, that we have made in the development uh, of this uh, impressive piece of software. Uh, and we will talk about it here. So this is the place uh, for you to get more information about uh, the background and uh, the history and the people uh, building Wasabi as a tool for you. Uh, and it will help you to better understand uh, some of the reasonings and uh, interesting choices that we made. Uh, because as Wasabi 1.0 was already uh, quite a groundbreaker uh, in the Bitcoin wallet space uh, as per se, and now with Wasabi 2.0, we really want to follow up on this and push the boundaries a bit. Um, uh, we are trying out a couple new things. Uh, and uh, because they are so new and reckless, we really need your, your help and your review and your feedback uh, of what you think about these ideas. Uh, so I encourage you now in tandem, uh, uh, as with this episode release, uh, go to GitHub uh, or to wasabiwallet.io and get yourself the Wasabi Wallet 2.0 uh, review candidate uh, to just try it out uh, and see how it works for you. Uh, especially your first impressions uh, are going to be extremely interesting to us. To start this out then further, we had with Wasabi 1.0 a software that strived to protect your privacy uh, as, as much as reasonable um, under the hood. And one of the great examples of this is, for example, uh, the Tor integration. Right? Uh, you just download Wasabi and run it. And Tor runs in the background. You didn't have to configure it. You didn't even necessarily have to know that it was running there in the first place. Uh, and you were protected by default. And that's great, of course. That's where software should be. Uh, but there are other aspects of Wasabi 1.0 where we did not yet have the um, understanding of the problem and the technical capabilities to solve it in a way uh, that is frictionless uh, and uh, cheap. Uh, and reliable for the user uh, so that the robot can um, automate uh, some steps in this process. Uh, specifically, uh, these are things like coin selection uh, and choosing when to coin join uh, and how much. Uh, these things were all manual processes in Wasabi 1.0. And now with Wasabi 2.0, uh, a lot of these things are going to run much more smoother uh, in the background. So leveraging all the successful things that we did with Wasabi 1.0, uh, like the Tor integration, like a, uh, the private blockchain synchronization. Uh, and we add on top of that a uh, more sophisticated way to achieve uh, a blockchain level privacy per se. Um, and there are a lot of well technical innovations that went into making this possible, um, yet still far from perfect. Uh, and we opened up a whole new space of of research and uh, and open questions that are yet to be answered. Uh, and since, especially right now, this is not even the main net proper uh, release of Wasabi 2.0, still just the testing candidates, um, we predict that we will have a lot of new insights uh, as we roll this out gradually uh, and uh, gain real world experience uh, of how different users now interact uh, with this new wallet and ultimately what type of on-chain behavior uh, this leads to. Um, that's very difficult to simulate uh, uh, and we will see how we can further fine tune um, a lot of these uh, parameters. This. Uh, among many other things, uh, will be further discussed uh, over the next couple uh, months uh, as we continuously uh, record and release these podcasts. But thankfully, it will not just be me uh, blabbering all the time, but we will have some of the great contributors to the Wasabi Wallet project joining us uh, to give their insights uh, and, and their background and their history on why they came to work on such a privacy-preserving technology uh, and how their uh, unique insights contribute uh, to the space and actually make this possible. Um, it's a very broad problem and therefore needs a, a variety of people with different expertise uh, to make it possible. And so this, this is not just um, uh, you know, knowing a lot about the networking of a protocol uh, or 
the the blockchain specific things you know this is also things like ui and ux where we have to do a lot of uh, interesting advancements right because again wasabi wallet 2.0 is uh is going to support a lot of coin join uh specific uh behavior that is uh, unique to it and um now that we have these um these these coin join uh patterns we need to integrate that into the software nicely and uh, display it to the user nicely. Uh, so here went a lot of uh, research into the designing process uh, with not just the user interface, but the entire experience uh, of how to control uh, the setup is something where, again, we were quite reckless with, with new, um, new insights and new attempts, uh, which we will, of course, have to peer review uh, with you. So this is, uh, to sum up, all of these um, different technological advancements that made Wasabi 2.0 possible uh, play in tandem uh, into this concerto of um, different technologies coming together um, to enable a quite holistic uh, experience for the user uh, where uh, it just works in the background magically. At least uh, that's that's the hope. Uh, privacy by default uh, for a Bitcoin wallet. And well, as you can see me now, you also will notice one of the other important changes. Uh, whereas the Wasabi 1.0 podcast was audio only, um, and now we actually have visuals, uh, and you will get to see me and the guests, uh, where you hopefully get some interesting additional nuance to discover the faces who are actually working behind this privacy technology. One additional change that we are making uh, is that instead of uploading highlights of the podcast in advance uh, and then culminating the week with the full episode release, uh, we're going to flip that on its head now. We are going to first release the full episode uh, of this conversation uh, and then uh, afterwards uh, upload some highlights uh, of the of the conversation and this gives you the great opportunity uh, to contribute and to become part of this project as you can also submit clips uh, and short highlights of parts of this conversation that you liked uh, and you can share it with us on, on social media and we will highlight it uh, add it to our rss feeds and share it with others um, I think this will be a very interesting approach to get more deep insights of, um, from the same content uh, because other people will find other parts interesting. Um, and just highlighting this is a very easy way to digest this information and make sure that uh, you take the fullest out of it. Uh, so for this, uh, a great app for you that I can recommend is the Fountain app, uh, which you can get on iOS or Apple. Uh, or Android, uh, and this allows you to take clips uh, of a podcast very easily just by uh, curating a transcript and share it easily uh, on different avenues to us uh, where we can then further curate and highlight th those parts that are actually the most awesome. So this is all a uh, effort to keep in the ethos of podcasting 2.0 uh, and the value for value principle, right? Uh, we try to create some value for you here uh, by sharing important information by very knowledgeable people. Uh, and we hope that this information is valuable to you. Uh, and if you uh, if you agree and, and if you want to share some, con some value back to us, well, contribute. Uh, and these highlights are one awesome way to do so. Um, uh, because, you know, whenever you take notes and whenever you work on, on editing something, you really work with the material uh, and I, be I believe you understand it quite a lot more. Uh, so hopefully also this process for you to share the best clips uh, is going to be an additional, um, a, a good challenge for you, uh, maybe also to provide some additional context uh, by yourself. Uh, so this is, of course, a free and open source project, right? All these episodes are released under a public license. Uh, you can do with this content what you will. Uh, so edit it, mash it up, share it, whatever you want, uh, all in the, free, uh, in the free ethos of free and open source software. This podcast is just one part uh, of the education that here at Wasabi we want to put forward. Uh, so check out blog.wasabiwallet.io for a bunch of written content uh, with interesting tidbits and nuances and, and uh, strategies, uh, all in terms of Bitcoin privacy, uh, and to keep up to date with the team. Uh, also check out our Twitter at Wasabi Wallet, where you can keep up with uh, all the new things that the team uh, is working on. Uh, and this will include other podcasts, right? We really want to give you a couple behind the scenes look uh, and uh, other interesting conversations, right? Of course, we continue the Wasabi Wallet Research Club, 
uh, every Monday on uh, Twitter. So join us uh, for the Wasabi Research Club uh, if you want to help make Bitcoin a little bit more private. And then join the Wasabicans for our next episode uh, where I sit down with the founder of Wasabi, Nopara73, Adam Fixor, and talk about the history of Wasabi 1.0 uh, and our learnings at the, of that process and how we now adapt it uh, and, and innovate it with Wasabi 2.0 to hopefully make the Bitcoin wallet ecosystem more intuitive uh, and more private by default for everyone. I hope to have a lengthy conversation with Adam uh, and see you there in the next episode of Join the Wasabi Cast.